Oh, hi, and welcome to Minivan Camper Building with Leslie. How you doing? Today I'm going to slightly embarrass myself and give you a list of the five things that we wish we had known before taking out our minivan camper. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Leslie and I designed and built our camper van conversion all by myself. Why don't you go ahead while you're here and subscribe? We can stay in touch that way. Ask me any questions about the build or traveling in the van and I'm happy to help if I can. For now, let's get into all my embarrassing things we wish we had known. The first, oh, I have five by the way. And because I like you so much, I'm going to include a bonus at the end. So stick around. The first, thing that we wish we had known. The opportunity might arise where you have to stay in a truck stop or rest area. It's okay. Uh, as opposed to a real campsite, however, the rest area and truck stops are really just designed for a couple of hours overnight to catch a couple of Z's. If you're trying to drive cross country or you're trying to get from A to B, and it's a long distance, that means you can actually drive farther at night and roll in in the dark, which you re don't usually want to do in a campground because it really sucks to drive into a completely dark campground and find your way around. But in a rest area or a truck stop, you can do it because they're well lit there are usually lots of other campers, campers, or truckers around. So that's nice. You're not alone here. And also bathrooms. Hopefully the bathrooms are open and available and in good working order and clean. So even better. Now, the cons of staying in a rest area and a truck stop. Okay, yes, they can be noisy. All right, people are coming and going. You're probably right on a highway. Uh, diesel truck engines running all night. So yeah, that kind of stuff, not ideal. But again, you're there for a couple of hours. Uh, also, they're not usually real scenic. No, you're not gonna fling open the curtains at dawn, you know, and enjoy the natural surroundings. But again, you might even be up and gone on the road before dawn. And then the third con, technically, you might not actually be allowed to stay in a rest area overnight, okay? Uh, different states have different laws about how that works. Sometimes you are with no restrictions, sometimes there is a restriction, and sometimes it's just flat out not allowed. However, I, if you really need to sleep somewhere, I really doubt that state patrol would pull up and knock on your door and say you got to go because you're obviously there because you're tired and you just need a place to rest up before you get on the road again and can drive safely so in a pinch if you need to do it i would i would do it mm -hmm. uh the next number two thing i wish we had known is Starting out, resist the urge to overpack. So I know that it's tempting to try to predict everything if you're anything like me. You want to be prepared for every single situation that's going to come your way. Be ready for everything. So please try not to overpack. Some of the things I believe people overpack with are those giant axes. You're going to be chopping wood all the time, or you're just going to be buying firewood. Uh, power tools. Okay. Maybe you think you're going to be doing some quick repairs, but you know, power tools, they're big, they're bulky, and they take power. Um, those giant tire traction shims. Okay. Yeah. If you're going around, you know, in riverbeds or mudding, you'll probably need them, but I don't know. Think about your lifestyle. Too many clothes, maybe. I certainly am guilty of that. I tried to pack all the clothes into the camper van 
And then I found that I only used, you know, half of them. Uh, also a toilet, you know, do you think you want to put a toilet on board? Well, even in those big fancy rigs that have toilets and showers, I've heard many, 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 many people say, you know what, we thought we really needed the toilet and shower, we never used them. Yeah, I even one time visited a neighbor at a campsite who had this magnificent 40 foot rig. It had a king size bed, it had double vanity bathroom, it had the TV screen, you know, it's got the full size refrigerator, every fireplace. And she said, you know, we have this beautiful kitchen in here. She said, we never use the kitchen. We just grill outside. Don't commit to carrying things you're not even sure you're going to need yet. Give yourself some time to figure it out, is my point. Pros and cons of not overpacking. Uh, the first is when you have less stuff, you can find everything, right? You're not rummaging through stuff. Half of it you're not even using. You're leaner. Uh, the next pro is you're traveling lighter. You're more organized. Uh, you have less weight in the camper van, which can get you better gas mileage. You're saving money. The next pro is if this kind of thing is important to you, you're living more purposefully. You're living more minimally, minimalistly, and you're living more efficiently. You're living purposefully, you're living efficiently, and you're living minimally. And the cons? None. Absolutely none. There's no benefit to overpacking, believe me. Okay, the third thing that I wish we knew ahead of time was you are not isolated. You're not. Now, you might feel, as I did preparing for this, that, oh my gosh, I've got to get everything packed that I need. I'm going to be an island out there. I'm going to be completely self-sufficient. To a point, yes, you will, but you are not completely alone. Okay, here's all the reasons why not. You are going to be around other campers, even in a rest area. You, you, they're, believe me, they're there. People are around. You are mobile, so you have a quick drive to visit friends and family if you want. You don't have to go visit the friends and family you don't want. Uh, all the amenities of the country are at your disposal. Think about it. You're out there uh, using whatever gym you want, hanging out in coffee shops, um, museums, going to local sporting events, um, hanging out in cool libraries, whatever, visiting national parks, you're not alone and you're gonna have the opportunity to go use all these amenities. Whatever, whatever you feel like immersing yourself in, you can do it. You're quite the opposite of isolated. You now have the opportunity to dive in to this great country and then pluck from it whatever cultural experiences you want. It's a beautiful thing. When I was building the minivan, I had this feeling that I really had to prepare for everything and I needed us to be completely self-sufficient because that's what was on YouTube. That's not necessary. It's not. You're not going to be out there all by yourself. Stores are everywhere. Stores are everywhere. Somebody asked me one time, how much do you pack in your pantry? I said, well, not that much because we can always pick up what we need. The comedian uh, Stephen Wright had this line. He said, I have a collection of seashells and I keep it on beaches all over the world. Well, that's the way I feel about groceries. Yeah, we've got a magnificent pantry of groceries and it's in grocery stores all over the country. We're never going to do without. Number four, I wish we had known that stuff will get stolen, stuff will get lost, stuff will get left behind, stuff will get broken, and it's okay. Just accept it. 
Why is it okay? C number three, stores are everywhere. We lost our beloved camp stove at a campground one time somewhere in Arkansas. We had left a couple of things at the campsite to claim it, you know, as we took the minivan and went off and did some sightseeing. And when we got back, somebody had nicked our camp stove. So what did that mean for us? Well, first thing is I was mad at everybody and I questioned everybody about it. If they had seen anything, everybody was a suspect. I was so mad, but I got over that. And then we went out, we bought another stove. Uh, it turned out it was a great chance to upgrade our equipment. We got a better stove that was more efficient and smaller and easier to pack. So it all worked out and the stoves aren't that expensive. Number five thing I wish we had done immediately was use rewards programs. We are going to a region. There might be a grocery store only in that region. There might be a coffee chain, whatever, convenience stores. Use the rewards program. Oftentimes in grocery stores, they have like the sucker price and then they have the membership price. Don't be the sucker who pays the sucker price. Immediately sign up for their app and become a member and you're saving money right away. Oftentimes too, you get special deals. Coffee shops will have whatever, buy five coffees, get the six free. So a lot of good deals can pop up out there too. And fuel rewards. This was huge for us. We took, you know, our last cross country road trip when fuel was like five bucks a gallon. So fortunately we used every fuel reward that we could. Uh, it saved us anywhere from five cents to up to 20 cents a gallon in your regular life. That might not add up to a whole lot of money, but it sure does when you're driving cross country and you're packing on the miles every day. Yeah, use the rewards programs and save that money. Okay, time for the bonus. The bo bonus, number six thing that I wish we had known ahead of time is to use national services when you can. For things like um, prescriptions, for things like uh, gym memberships, for things like eyeglasses, uh, store memberships like Costco or Sam's, that kind of thing. And for any purchases that you're making on the road. Let's say you suddenly have to refill a prescription that you forgot about. Well, if you have a national service for that, you can go into any whatever, Walgreens or wherever, and get your, your prescription refilled. Eyeglasses, same thing. I've broken eyeglasses on the road. It's not pretty walking around with your frames taped together. And if I had a national prescription service, I would have been able to stop in and get the glasses replaced. Instead, I had to walk around with tape on my face. Another great national service is to shop at stores where you know you can return your purchases if you need to. We were somewhere in Nevada or Arizona or something, and I decided that we should have a battery pack. It's a diehard portable power battery pack. You can jump your car with it. It has a little air compressor. You can fill tires with it. You can plug your phone in there and charge it. Okay. We needed that. Yeah. So I said, okay, I'll pop into an Ace Hardware and pick one up. National chain. I even asked the guy, if I don't like it, I can return it. Sure you can. Okay. Well, about five states later, when I decided that this wasn't really working and I was going to return it, Turns out Ace Hardware's are franchises. They're individual, independent franchises. So if you bring your product to another Ace Hardware and they look at it and they go, we know that we're not gonna move that. We only sell one of these things every two years. They're not gonna take it for another store. So that didn't work out. I missed an opportunity to return something I didn't really want and to buy the thing that really would have been useful. 
would probably be like a Jackery or something. I don't know. I don't even know because I'm still stuck with this diehard thing I'm using. But if I had asked enough questions to know that Ace Hardware was independent franchises and not a truly national brand, then I would have known I couldn't return this thing. So that's my mistakes being turned into a valuable resource for you. You're welcome. I hope any of these helped. I really do. If you have any questions about anything involving the camper van build or anything about traveling in the van, then go ahead and give me a shout. And I'll try to answer as much as I can about building or traveling or living in the van, whatever. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.